to the World Tarot. This is going to be a channeled message for um, astrophysicists or any other kind of physicists who might be happening to watch tarot. So I got this uh, channeled message regarding dark energy. And when I'm saying dark energy, I'm not referring to it as it's usually referred to in the spiritual community. I'm talking about the dark energy which was discovered in 1998. It's a universal force of some sort. People believe that um, it could be made out of a certain type of particles that we cannot see. But this is the energy that's pulling the universe apart. Besides dark energy, there is dark matter which is holding the universe together. So there are two forces in this universe. One is holding it together, the other one is pulling it apart. Both of them are called dark they're dark because you cannot see them. No matter what light they direct at these types of energy or matter, they don't see anything. But um, because of the way that the light interacts with them, um, they can tell that there's something there, right? The light goes around it, basically. So there's something in the way. There's an obstacle. And uh, by this, they can uh, determine what mass it has. They can't see it, but it's there. And it's actually much heavier than uh, normal matter, common matter. Common matter is everything we see on earth. It's my little hand here, it's this object here, it's the light that's hitting the object. All of these are represent common matter, okay? But common matter only, only uh, makes up 4% of the whole universe. It used to be believed that common matter is, that, that the whole universe is made out of common matter. But actually, only 4% is. Another 23% of the universe is made out of dark matter, which is the stuff, the glue that holds the universe together. And 73% of the universe is dark energy, which actually is pulling it apart. So the biggest part of the universe is something that is going to rip the universe apart. That's the biggest force in the universe. It's something that will destroy it. And... Um, the message I got regarding this dark energy, not dark matter, dark energy, is that you shouldn't look for dark energy, you should listen for dark energy. Instead of directing all different types of light at this dark energy, they should be directing sound and they should map it out as if um, as um, a bat maps out its environment by using sonar, okay? So something like that. It needs to use sound instead of light. Of course, sound travels much slower than light. That could be a problem. But that's the message I've got. I don't know what else to tell you about this except for that. Don't look for dark energy. Listen for dark energy, okay? There you go. So um, I made some notes here. I'm trying to read from my little notes here. Okay. Also, another message I got was that dark energy contains a possibly unknown metal. There's some kind of metal inside this dark energy, or it's all made out of this metal. I'm not sure exactly. But because of this metal, um, this metal is being magnetized by somewhere outside the universe. And that's why it's pulling everything apart. The metal is being magnetized by something outside of the universe. And that is what's pulling the universe apart. It's kind of like an experiment. It's like our universe, our whole universe is on somebody's petri dish or inside some kind of particle accelerator possibly. I'm saying particle accelerator to just get, um, to find an, an analogy, right? It's not necessarily a particle accelerator. It's kind of like a container where there's some kind of magnets and uh, the universe in the middle of this container is being pulled apart by these magnets um, through this dark energy inside it. Um, dark energy is considered to be inside vacuum, the vacuum of the universe. That's where dark energy is usually found, inside the vacuum, wherever there's a vacuum in the universe. That's where dark energy is, okay? So, um, in the particle accelerator, for example, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, 
they have vacuum. They have little particles inside this. They're accelerated. They're thrown uh, through this tunnel. And this tunnel has void inside of it, right? So it uh, that those particles do not get um, mixed up with other particles. That's why there's void. And it's the same with the universe. Between our stars, between our star systems, there's void in the in space, in deep space, there's void, okay? So it's kind of like in the accelerator. It's similar to that. And our universe is moving. It's moving apart, it's pulling apart on all directions, but it's also moving. For example, our planet is not just going around the sun. The sun with all the, the planets are also going towards something. And we don't know what it is. So our whole universe could be an experiment. We could be inside a large hadron collider and we're going to be smashed at some point. Of course, this is going to take very long. Because if we were to assume that there are some huge creatures putting our little universe in this huge hadron collider, uh, or whatever it is, <laughs> um, this is going to take a very long time for us. It might take a few years for them in their larger universe, but in our little tiny speck of dust, this could take sextillions of years. I said sextillions because a sextillion has 21 uh, zeros. 21 is the world. So there you go. The end of the world is going to happen in a very long time. That's what I'm saying. So even though it's not that long for these huge creatures who are our little gods, um, it's going to take a very long time for us. So it's not happening tomorrow. But um, yes, our whole universe could be somebody's experiment. And that's why everything's moving somewhere. That's where we're going. We're going towards our end. Uh, for these people to um, analyze what's going to happen to this speck of dust. And they don't know that this speck of dust contains so many living creatures. And uh, that's probably what we're doing to, to even smaller creatures right now. Because we have a lot of experiments doing that. So, uh, of course, this is not a new theory. Um, there's an older theory which says that maybe the whole universe is on uh, somebody's petri dish. And he's, uh, this god creature is looking at us through um, a microscope. So, this is an old theory. But it could be true. Since I got these channel messages. So, this dark energy, like I said, it could contain some kind of metal that we don't know of. Maybe it's a metal we know of, we just can't see it properly because of other reasons. And this metal is being pulled apart by some kind of magnet outside of the universe. Okay? Also, you need to listen for it rather than look for it. So, that's, that's all I've got for now. Uh, I'm going to do a tarot reading to clarify more. But I was asking my cards earlier, what is dark energy? And I kept getting the Seven of Swords. I think I got the Seven of Swords seven times in a row, <laughs> asking the same question. And that's how I got the um, idea of metal, right? The swords are made of metal. There's a guy running away with five swords, leaving two swords behind. So there's some kind of sound that can be traced it's it's like you can get a glimpse of it. You can't get the full information possibly. Because the guy's running away with the swords. But there's some traces. There's something that can be found. You can find some kind of hint that this is happening, right? Four of swords. King of wands. That's light. Wands, fire. Swords is sound. So the light and the sound, right? I was talking about light and sound a lot. Holy Spirit, show me what is dark energy, please. Holy Spirit, show me. Now we've got... It's a particle. So it, they have particles inside that dark energy. There are particles in there. They're different to the particles we know on Earth that we've discovered already. But there are particles in there. And that, there's a theory. They do believe that there's some kind of... there. Yeah, that there's other particles in there. So yeah, there is something in there. You can't see these particles, but they're there, right? Because they measured. They have a measured mass, right? This is a mass. A 
particle, a pentacle. There's something here. So it has mass. Five of cups reversed. The cups represent, uh, water represents a wave, right? Light is a wave. The five of cups is in reverse. It's like the waves do not hit this object. They go around it. That's why it's in reverse. Five of cups reversed. So there's the light doesn't cause any change to this object. It's it doesn't interact with the with the object. That's what I'm getting here. Okay. Eight of cups. Fifty-eight. Fifty-eight could be the atomic number of something. Let me see what is the uh, atomic number fifty-eight. In the I'm talking about the you know the chemicals that we've discovered already um, let's see atomic number 58 it's called cerium c-e-r-i-u-m so uh, the the element which has atomic number 58 is called cerium. Let's see what the hell this is. <sighs> okay, Wikipedia, of course, because what else? <laughs> so cerium is a chemical element with the symbol CE and atomic number 58. Cerium is a soft, ductile, and silvery white metal. It's a metal, okay? It's a metal. So I said metal, it's a metal. I don't know if it's cerium or another kind of metal, but definitely um, dark energy contains some kind of metal that tarnishes when exposed to air. So it, it gets uh, damaged by air a lot. But I said that um, this dark energy is inside void. It's not air. There's no air around it. There's only void. There's no air, okay? Cerium is the second element in the lanthanid series, and while it often shows the plus free oxidation state characteristic of the series, it also has a stable plus four state that does not oxidize water. So it doesn't. Oh, this is water, isn't it? Five of cups. Let me think for a second. It is also considered one of the rare earth elements, so it's rare, it's very rare on earth. Cerium is a very rare element. So like I said, this metal, whatever kind of metal is inside this dark energy, could be something that is not found on earth or very rarely found on earth. Or in just like, it could be in the air somewhere, you know, you might not even be able to detect it. So um, it's one of the rare earth elements, this metal. Cerium. Okay. Cerium has no known biological role in humans, but it is not particularly toxic, except with intense or continued exposure. Okay. Let's see what else does this thing do. So despite always occurring in combination with uh, the other rare earth elements in minerals such as those of the monazite and bastnasite groups, cerium is easy to extract from its ores, as it can be distinguished among the lanthanides by its unique ability to be oxidized. Okay, so when it meets air, it uh, becomes, it changes color and stuff, you know. So cerium was what was the first of the lanthan lanthanides to be discovered. Okay. Okay, so I don't know what else, but the, that's the main idea that I was getting, right? That uh, there are some particles inside this um, dark energy. Even if you don't see them, they're there. Because it's been calculated anyway. You can calculate their mass and stuff. And 58 talks about cerium, which is a very rare metal. 
so yes it's made of metal like I said it is true it's kind of a confirmation to that and it could be a metal that we don't know of on earth seven of cups more cups it could be a, a in liquid form it could be that this metal is in liquid form inside the um, dark energy maybe just saying I don't know <sighs> seven of cups there could be different types seven different types of elements in dark energy possibly okay we had an alarm ringing there <laughs> maybe this rang a bell for somebody I don't know <laughs> I'm just saying okay so we were talking about um, the fact that this metal could be in liquid form and there could be seven types of metals metal in this um, in this dark energy the number seven keeps popping up because I was getting seven of swords for what dark energy is it's made out of seven metals possibly am I right is it made of seven metals is dark energy made of seven different metals yes oh my god that's such a clear yes and more 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 liquid so I think it's liquid metal they're liquid metals and they're mixing together somehow I don't know Ten of Wands, uh, and there's Ten of Wands is um, is a weight is gravity it makes me think of gravity. So they're very heavy, heavy metals. Okay, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Anything else we need to know? Five of Wands reversed. Five of Wands is like conflict. It's um. There's not a lot of conflict. I don't know. <laughs> they don't. Uh, they don't interact too much. They don't uh, react with each other too much. I think. You know what I mean. <laughs> Anything else? Knight of Cups reversed. Oh God! I don't know. They're not dripping. <laughs> Or they are <coughs> okay I'm gonna make it I'm gonna mess it up completely so what we know so far seems to possibly rings a bell for somebody makes sense to somebody hopefully I hope because if I go into it more I might just um, make it more confusing so I don't think I'm gonna go into it more than this six of Pentacles very symmetrical the matter could be very symmetrical uh, these elements could be very symmetrical somehow I don't know the the shape the whatever organization the structure could be very symmetrical inside this matter inside this dark energy not matter dark energy um, yeah they could have very uh, symmetrical particles is that what I'm getting are the particles super symmetrical here is that what I'm getting here? That the particles are very symmetrical? King of Pentacles. King of Particles. There you go. I'm going to call them particles. All the pentacles are particles now. <laughs> and uh, this, these are waves here. And this is um, electromagnetism or something. The wands. So particles and, <clears throat> and this energy... Okay, Knight of Wands, Knight of Wands, back and forth, back and forth. These particles are moving back and forth. Well, technically they're moving away because there's some kind of there's some kind of force that's pulling these things. There, it's pulling them. Okay, there's a force that's pulling the particles. Oh boy. Oh my god, 58 again. Look, 58, 58 again. So something about atomic number 58 or something else from chemistry. <laughs> so something about the number 58 is very significant here. Nine of cups. Okay, um, that that's all I think that I can uh, muster up here. So somebody smarter than me needs to take this forward. The fool, look at that. The fool says bye, so it's like, um, yeah, that's all I know. <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> okay, the fool is zero. <laughs> Tabula rasa. 
Okay, <clears throat> so we need a king of wands here to take this forward. There you go. Um, yeah. I think that's all I have for you. Let's see, what else was I saying here? So we, this was talking about the, the fact that there's a metal, that this is made of a metal, apparently a liquid metal, uh, seven liquid metals, which are very rare or something like that. And they're being magnetized by some kind of force outside the universe that's pulling them apart. Maybe they themselves have these magnetic qualities or something like that. I don't know. They could be repelled. Oh, five of wands reverse. They're repelling each other. Yeah. They're not, they're not interacting properly. They're kind of repelling each other. So the metals inside this dark energy could be repelling each other. And that's why it's pulling the universe apart. Their properties could be repelling each other somehow. Okay, there you go. Uh, what else did I say? So I said uh, you should listen for dark energy that rather than looking for it because you can't see it no matter what light you direct at it. So let's clarify that if we can. Uh, let's try at least. Um, so how do we listen for this? Should we? I mean, let's clarify first. Should I listen rather than look for it? Or not me, somebody else. Anyway, should we listen for it rather than look for it? Yes or no? If we can get a yes or no answer, that would be really cool. Um, oh, too many, too many cards. I look back. Yes, 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 yes. Hey, <laughs> the fool knows. That's me. I'm the fool. <laughs> Double arasa. I don't know anything. <laughs> Five of cups reversed. Ten of wands. Five of wands. Okay. Five of wands, ten of wands. So there's very strong energy in here. Magnetic force. The five of wands is in the upright this time though. So what was I talking about? I was talking about listening rather than seeing. But this is light. Because it's fire. Hmm. So there's a magnet, there's a force here. It's a force. There's a force we're dealing with. But um, I asked if we should listen rather than look. And I, yeah, you should listen. But what are you listening for? Because, the, yeah, the light doesn't work. The waves don't work. They don't see anything. But it's there because it's heavy. Okay? So you don't see it, but it's there because it's heavy. And it's interacting somehow with the universe. Okay, fine. There you go. So listen, how do you listen? What exactly do you do? What do you do to listen? Knight of Cups reversed. Two of Cups. How do you listen? How do you listen for it? How do you listen for it? Uh, Knight of Cups for me could be like a musician. But he's in reverse. I don't know. Sing to it. Dog whistle. Could be sounds that we cannot hear. I don't know. Maybe we need to use sounds that we cannot hear. I don't know. Or certain very low frequencies. We need to use very low frequencies, I think. Should we use very low frequencies? Eight of Cups reversed. What? Eight of Cups reversed is like a comeback, is returning, looping something. They need to loop some kind of sound. Loop the sound. But, um... What sound? Loop the sound. Is this a very low frequency? 58, but yeah, it's not together. Anyway, um, Ace of Pentacles. Yes, yes, it's a low. It's a very low sound. A low vibration. It has to be a very low vibration on a loop directed towards this dark energy. Four of Wands. Yes, yes, okay. Four of Wands. It's very stable. It's like a low voice, right? Four of Wands represents the um, represents Aries energy. The number four makes me think of the Emperor. The Emperor is a masculine energy, you know. Men have lower voices, so yeah, it has to be a very low 
tone, a low vibration, okay? Okay. So, yeah, um, you know how people don't like low vibrations, they like high vibrations. Well, you need to direct low vibrations towards dark energy to um, map it out. Okay, there you go. Anything else? Queen of Cups. Queen of Sound. We need a soprano to sing to it. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is high. This is like a higher energy, higher frequency. Because it's a woman, right? A, a female soprano has higher pitched. Uh, maybe they need to, to go between low and high, possibly. Maybe they need to loop between um, low frequencies and high frequencies. Am I right about this? Should they loop between low and high? Two of Cups. Seven of Cups. So Two of Cups is like the Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine coming together, right, in union. So, yeah, they need to loop between low frequencies and high frequencies, the sound. I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know. What else should I say here? It's true, okay? Ace of Wands, Ace of Swords. What I said so far is true. That's why the Aces are coming up in the upright, I think. I hope. Okay, 11. The number 11. This is a master number. Wands, fire and sound. Light and sound. Something about light and sound. Maybe there is some kind of light that could be used or, or somehow in, in combination with the, the sound. It's like uh, thunder and lightning. So, you might get some kind of phenomena. When you do this, you will see some kind of visible phenomena. Even if you don't see the matter itself, you see how it's interacting with the sound or the light. And that's how you can tell that there's something there. Okay, so you're going to see certain phenomena. I don't know what else to tell you. Anything else? Ah, too much stuff. I'm not going to be able to interpret this. This is too complicated. Like, what I'm talking about is too complicated for me to be able to interpret so many cards at once. Let me look at them for a second. The particle and the sound here. Sound waves. Whatever, I don't know. <clears throat> Anything else? Queen of Swords came out again. Again with the sound. Something about sounds. Seven of Pentacles. Again... Sounds and particles. Listen to the particles. Listen to the music of the spheres. There's seven. Seven elements here. Again with the number seven. There's seven elements inside this dark energy. Could be seven different metals. Four of cups. Somebody's ignoring something with the four of cups. They're looking in the wrong place also. They're looking at the Three of Cups instead of looking at the Ace of Cups coming from the sky. They're looking in the wrong place for dark energy, possibly too. I don't know. Where should they be looking for it? Three of Cups. Eight of Swords. <laughs> I have no idea what this means. They should look at it in the ocean. Four plus three cups makes seven cups. There are seven oceans on this planet. Am I wrong about that? That's really embarrassing if it's wrong. <laughs> okay, the seven seas. Yeah. Okay, they need to look for this in the sea. They might find this kind of matter in the sea. Dark energy, they might find it in the sea. I don't know why I'm getting that. Um... Maybe that's where they need to look rather than underground. I don't know. Should they look under the sea for dark energy? Should they? Yes or no? Holy Spirit. Should they look for dark energy under the sea? Somewhere. I don't know. Should they? Should they? Yes, they should. Yes, they should. I don't know how. I don't know what else to tell you. But that's what I'm getting. Nine of Swords. 
Nine of Swords is anxiety. Uh, maybe deep under the sea. Deep, deep under the sea. Two of Swords. 92 could be significant. I don't know how. 192 or 92 could be significant. Is that another atomic number or something? I don't know. Anyway, um, you know better than me if you are what I said. You are a physicist of some sort. Nine of Cups. King of Wands. Two of Wands. Maybe there's a fire sign male who watches these readings who is an astrophysicist or something. Could be. Maybe. Maybe that's the person this message is for. Is there a Leo or a Pisces here? Oh my god, I hope this is not uh, my, um, my, uh, what do you call cult leader. <laughs> because there was, you know, when I was talking about cult leaders, the cult leaders who watch the tarot community, I was getting someone <coughs> who had a mix of Leo and Pisces in their chart. <coughs> Possibly Aries too, I don't know. Okay. So there could be somebody who understands what this crap is and he knows what to do about it. This guy could also be very spiritual because that's why he's watching. He could be interested in spirituality too. Who's this guy? Talk to me about the guy who might understand this crap. Now I'm being nosy. <laughs> Three of Wands, Ten of Pentacles. This is somebody who lives at a distance from me and has money, possibly. Could be one of my family members, actually. I don't know. <laughs> Ten of Pentacles is family, no? Is this a family member of mine or somebody else? Is this a family member of mine? Four of Pentacles is my father. Or, yeah, it could be my father. Eight of Pentacles. Could also be somebody I worked with. Could be a boss. Okay, so it could be a boss too. Yeah, or somebody I worked with in some kind of capacity. Or went to school with or something. Three of Swords, heartbreak. Ten of Swords, somebody who betrayed me and broke my heart. Do I know who this person is? Yes. There you go. That's your message for today, <laughs> Heartbreaker. <laughs>